Name now, Oklahoma Senator James Langford. And Senator, before uh, before we begin, I do want to mention the anniversary of the Oklahoma City bombing. I've been to that national memorial there. It is extraordinarily powerful, and as a nation, we should never forget. So I thank you for t even that more so for taking time out with us today. Thanks. Appreciate uh, that. The news coming now with uh, Senator McCarthy, this 1.5 trillion. I think it's caught a lot of people off guard. Just seems like 24 hours ago he had drawn a line in the sand. And that line seems to be gone already. I don't know that that line is gone. I think he's laying out a marker to say, let's actually negotiate how we're going to try to reduce spending, what this looks like. But it also reminds people when you talk about $1.5 trillion number, just how to out how out of balance we really are. Uh, this is not a one year or two year or five year. This is a jumbo mortgage like the world has never seen at thirty one and a half trillion dollars more than our total economy. This is going to take decades to be able to whittle it down. But you got to get started somewhere. And so I think what he's laying out is here's a marker. It's going to have to be a big number. But we've got to get started actually reducing spending and start the trajectory the other way. Yeah, and, and again, Representative McCarthy. So some of the bullet points so far, uh, repealing the IRS agents, the 87,000 IRS agents, the army of folks ready to descend. By the way, on middle class Americans, let's be honest, there's, you don't need 87,000 uh, IRS agents for just uh, supposedly the wealthiest out there. Do you think this would be a non-starter with the administration? Well, I hope it's not a non-starter. I hope it's the beginning of a conversation. Do I think the administration is going to take it and go, yes, we love all this? Probably not. Uh, but the administration should respond and say, okay, no, here's what we would rather have instead and start the negotiation back and forth. Don't forget, Joe Biden was the lead negotiator on the debt ceiling during the Obama administration. So when the Budget Control Act happened in 2011 and 12 and 13, and we literally reduced spending two years in a row across the federal government, Biden was the negotiator as vice president on that debt ceiling issue. He's been the negotiator on this before. He just needs to come back to the table and say, okay, here's what we're going to do now to be able to reduce spending, change the trajectory. You know, you just have to wonder if he's beholden to a whole different set of people these days. To that we're point, find out. Yeah. Uh, to that point, uh, uh, a, a return of discretionary spending to pre COVID levels. I find this to be very intriguing since uh, it feels like the White House used that last emergency for that 2021, uh, you know, for the 2021 uh, $1.9 trillion that the America did not need, the sort of modern monetary theory. They had an opening, they took it, and, and they're going down the road at this free money stuff. Is there any chance, I mean, again, I know it's a starter, that the, that the White House will reverse course on this sort of free money uh, that, the, that the Democrats are trying not only on a national level, but within several uh, cities in this country? Yeah, we can only hope at this point. It's really the American people have to be able to push back and say, hey, it's a reasonable thing for us to be able to reduce our spending. We're way out of balance, way out of control. There's all this money that's flowing out. It's sparked all this inflation that we're all experiencing. We've got high inflation still. I know the White House is celebrating 5% inflation, but that's 5% inflation. That's still prices that are going up faster than wages on that. So the American people are still experiencing that. And if the American people will push back on it, this administration will respond. By the way, in immigration, American people have been pushing back for two years. Finally, the administration is starting to say, okay, we need to change some of our policies on immigration. We need to be able to do that on debt issues as well and let them wake up to it. It's interesting you mentioned that the administration may be celebrating 5% uh, inflation, uh, and maybe a few in the media have thrown on the pom poms as well, but the American public's not. Uh, not. Almost every single survey of sentiment in this country is in the toilet, some shockingly so. Uh, so I think maybe this is a great move by Republicans to take the lead to show that they are, uh, you know, that there's some wiggle room and they're willing to negotiate. Uh, just how, I guess it's up right now to, to, to folks like you and your colleagues to keep the fires going, to get, keep their feet to the fire. Yeah, we, we have a debt ceiling for a reason. We're the only country in the world that has a debt ceiling like this. The reason we have it is to force those moments when everyone has to look at the debt we have and to be able to negotiate how we're going to slow this down. So this is the right moment to be able to actually have this debate. We do eventually have to raise the debt ceiling, no question about that. We've got to keep fiscal stability across the country and around the world. But we also need to be able to look not just our short-term issues, but our long-term issues. This is the right moment to do it. You have certainly been one of the most responsible uh, in Washington, D.C. for a number of years. So I'm honored and, and thrilled that you came on the show to, to talk with us about this today. Senator Langford, thank you very much. Good to see you again. You too.